Welcome to the second video on the conic sections, the ellipse. The goal of this video is to graph an ellipse given in general form. But before we do that, let's go ahead and review. If we have the equation of ellipse in standard form, the center will be hk. Since we know that a is greater than b, the fraction with the larger denominator tells you whether the major axis will be horizontal or vertical. If the larger denominator is under the x part of the equation, then we will have a horizontal major axis. If the larger denominator is under the y part of the equation, we will have a vertical axis. If we can determine the value of a, a will tell us the distance from the center to the endpoints of the major axis, and b will tell us the distance from the center to the endpoints of the minor axis. And then lastly, we can use this equation here to determine the value of c, and c will be the distance from the center to the two foci, and notice all the information is the same whether we have a horizontal or vertical major axis except to find the foci when there's a horizontal major axis you add and subtract c from the x-coordinate of the center while if we have a vertical major axis we add and subtract c from the y-coordinates of the center to determine the coordinates of the foci. So the goal of this video is to be able to write a parabola given in general form in standard form so we can graph it. So the first thing we're going to do is group the x terms and the y terms together and move the constant to the right side. So we'd have x squared, that's the only x term, plus then we'd have 4y squared minus 16y equals it'd be negative 12. Now we don't have to complete the square on the x part because it's already a perfect square. We can rewrite this as x minus 0 squared if we want. Now to complete the square on the y part, we're going to have to have a coefficient of 1. So we're going to factor out the 4, and we'll be left with y squared, so be minus 4y if we factor out the 4. And we'll leave room to complete the square, and this would equal negative 12. So to complete the square here, we're going to take half of negative 4 and then square it. Well, negative 2 squared would be positive 4. Now we have to be careful here, when we add a 4 here, we're actually adding 16 because when we distribute, we'd have a 4 times 4. So we have to add 16 to the right side of the equation to maintain the equality. Let's go ahead and rewrite this now. We'd have the quantity x minus 0 squared plus 4 times the quantity y minus 2 squared, it's now a perfect square, equals 4. Now, for the equation to be in standard form, it must equal 1. So now we'll divide everything by 4. So our equation in standard form will be the quantity x minus 0 squared divided by 4 plus, notice here the 4 and the 4 simplify out. So we'd have y minus 2 squared divided by 1 equals 1. Okay, so now we should be able to determine a lot of information about the graph of this ellipse. First, the center will be 0, 2. Notice the larger denominator is under the x part, so we're going to have a horizontal major axis as pictured here. So now we know that a squared equals 4, so a equals 2, and b squared equals 1, so b equals 1. While we're here, let's go ahead and find the value of c. Remember, a is the largest, so the equation would be a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So a squared is 4, b squared is 1, so we'd have c squared equals 3, so c equals the square root of 3. So now we have all the information we need to make a nice graph of this ellipse. Let's go ahead and transfer this information on the next screen and graph it. Center was 0, 2, a was equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and c equals the square root of 3. And we also know we have a horizontal major axis. Let's go ahead and plot our center, it's 0, 2. So to find the endpoints of the major axis, we'll go right two units, and then left two units of the center. And then the endpoints of the minor axis will be B units above the center and B units below the center. So it'd be here and here. Let's go ahead and sketch our ellipse. Next, we should plot the foci. Remember, if this is the center, we know the foci will be over here somewhere and over here somewhere. So we're going to add and subtract the square root of 3 from the x-coordinate of the center. So one of the foci will be 
equals 0 plus the square root of 3 comma 2 and the other foci will be 0 minus the square root of 3 or negative square root of 3 2. Let's go ahead and convert square root 3 to a decimal so we can plot it. So it's approximately 1.73. So 1.73 comma 2 somewhere over here and negative 1.73 comma 2 would be somewhere over here. These are our two foci. And this was F1, this was F2, based upon how we labeled it here. Let's go ahead and try another one. So the first step is to group the x terms and the y terms together. So we'll have 9x squared minus 18x plus 4y squared plus 16y equals 11. Next step, to complete the square, we do have to factor out the leading coefficients for the x part and the y part. So we'll have 9 times the quantity x squared minus 2x plus some number plus 4 times the quantity y squared plus 4y plus some number must equal 11. Okay, so we'll take half of negative 2 and square it. That'll give us plus 1. Now if we put a 1 here, it's really like adding 9. So we'll add 9 to the right side. Now here we'll take half of 4 and square it. That'll give us 4. Putting a 4 here is like adding 16. So we have to add 16 to the right side. These should now be perfect square trinomials. Let's go ahead and try to factor it. Here we'll have the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 4 times the factors of 4 that add to 4. That'd be 2 and 2, so we'd have the quantity y plus 2 squared must equal, over here we're going to have 11 plus 9, that's 20, plus 16, 36. Now to make it equal to 1, we're going to have to divide everything by 36. If we simplify these fractions, it should be in standard form. Let's see. Well, 9 over 36, that'd be 1 fourth, so the denominator is 4. Plus here we're going to have the quantity y plus 2 squared. This would be 1 ninth, so our denominator is 9 equals 1. Notice the larger denominator is under the y part this time, so now we're going to have a vertical major axis as we see here. Our center would have the coordinates positive 1, negative 2. a squared would equal 9. That implies a equals 3 and b squared equals 4, so we have b equals 2. Let's take this information over to the next screen. We still have to find c, and then we'll make a graph. Okay, so we have our center, and we have a and b. Remember, the equation to find c is a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So we know a squared is 9, we know b squared is 4, so it looks like c squared equals 5, so c equals the square root of 5. Okay, let's see if we can make a nice graph of this now. Let's first plot our center. 1, negative 2 would be here. Next, we know we have a vertical major axis, so to find the endpoints of the major axis, we'll go up a units and down a units. a equals 3, so we'll go up 3 units, down 3 units. b is equal to 2, so we'll go right from the center 2 units and left from the center two units. So our lips passes through these four points. The only thing left to do now is to determine the coordinates of the foci. Now remember, since the two foci will be up here and down here, we're going to add or subtract square root five from the y coordinate of the center. So the first focus would be one comma negative two plus the square root of five. And the second focus would be 1 comma negative 2 minus square root of 5. Again, it's always helpful to convert these to decimals to graph them on the coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and do that. So one of them would be right about here. And the other focus would be somewhere around here. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found these examples helpful. Thank you for watching.